Hi everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey and I want to show you how you can quickly add a vintage look to your images using On One Photo Raw 2018. One of the many reasons I like working with On One Photo Raw is it actually helps me to think in a more creative way in the field. With a vast array of tools inside the effects module, I can create whatever I can imagine. Image making, to me, is more like painting rather than faithfully capturing what's in front of me. I spent a few years painting with oil on canvas, and that approach to the world is still embedded in the way I see things. I try to create images that are not quite part of the familiar world, but not so far outside of it either. So let's take a look at the Browse module. After importing my photographs, I'll roughly cull through them and rate my favorites. I found over the years that it's important not to try to choose your best shots directly after a shoot. I usually let a day or two go by to get a better perspective. What I'm looking for is good composition, light, and mood. Sometimes a photograph will speak deeply to me and be the first in line to be processed. Looking through all the photos I shot from this particular morning in Booth Bay Harbor, I choose this one as my favorite. So let's just take a look at it here. I really like the way everything is balanced there. So I'm going to go ahead and take that into develop for some basic tone and color changes. So overall, I like what I'm seeing. I don't really need to change all that much. Um, I am going to take the highlights way down because uh, some of the sky detail was lost and there's a little bit of it reintroduced there. And I also want to bring the shadows up just a little bit just to regain some of those details. So that's pretty much it in develop. And I'm going to take it over to effects now. First, I'm going to add a dynamic contrast filter to get some definition on points. So let's go ahead and do that. Dynamic contrast. And uh, right off the bat, that's not too bad. Um, it's a little bit higher than I would like. Um, so I have a preset that I use that um, I'm pretty happy with as a starting point. So this actually looks pretty good to me. Um, so next, I'm actually going to add a blur effect. And the reason why I'm doing this is um, I like to actually get rid of the digital sharpness in my pictures when I'm going for a more of a vintage look. And um, the best one for this is the surface blur. Um, it gives an almost watercolor look uh, if the, the settings are high enough, but we're going to take them way down here to about three. Um, if I can get down there, three, yeah. Um, very imperceptible difference here. Uh, you can see just a very slight difference in the uh, sharpness. And it, it actually does make a difference when it's blown up. And you can't always see it on a, on a computer screen. So that is, uh, that's what we're going to do there. And the next thing I'm going to add is a glow effect. And the glow, uh, it, it gives a nice diffusion in high contrast areas and contributes to the painterly mood. And that's kind of what I'm after here. It also, in this case, um, will kind of contribute to the foggy feel of, of the, the atmosphere itself. So let's go ahead and add that. And let's see what there is available here. Uh, I just like to go down and see if there's anything here right off the bat in the presets that I can start with. Um, it all looks a little bit too much here. Um, yeah. Maybe that one. Okay, let's take a look at that at 100%. So I actually do like that. And it's got a little bit of, uh, you can see it's kind of almost got a foggy feel to it. Um, probably take the amount down a tiny bit. And that'll be good for that. Okay, so I'll bring that back up to uh, fit the screen. Now, next, I want to apply a black and white filter. And uh, again, I'm just really um, applying this for the toner, the toning uh, color that I'm going to be using, not really to convert it to black and white. So we'll go ahead and uh, get that up and running there. And I'm going to go down to the toner and choose antique yellow. And then go back down to about 25% or so. About there. That looks pretty good to me.
So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a texture. And I use textures a lot. I have a huge collection of textures. Uh, I either bought them mostly from Photomorphous, uh, downloaded royalty-free from Flickr and various other sources on the web, or simply created them myself. When I'm out and about, I look for distressed wood, rusted metal, crumbling walls, and just about anything that has an interesting surface. So for this uh, photograph, I'm actually going to uh, go to a photomorphous uh, texture. So let me add a texture here and find what the one I'm looking for, which, let's see, it's this one here. And then I believe it's number eight is the one that I like. Number eight right there. Okay, now that's just a little bit too much for me, so what I'll do is I'll pull back the opacity, um, probably to about there, and let's see, do we need to do anything with the brightness here? Uh, maybe the brightness just up a little bit, just for the details. And other than that, I think that that is good. So this actually fits the mood uh, perfectly and gives the image the feeling I had when I was standing there shooting at the harbor. Um, textures in general, when used well, can give your photograph a sense of timelessness. Um, and that's kind of what I strive for in my work. You can go overboard with textures, so be careful. Well, one of the most important sliders is the opacity and um, I try to keep it fairly subtle. There's times when I'll use up to five or six textures, so balancing that look and not making everything look too muddy is an art. Um, the brightness slider is also an important consideration for how much actual texture, in, in, texture interacts with the scene. Um, so finally, I will add a vignette. And um, Again, don't, you want to be fairly subtle about it. That's probably even a little bit, that's actually not too bad. So um, one thing that I notice here is that on the edges, it's uh, bringing that color up a little bit too far for me. So I'm going to go to the blending modes and I'll go down to luminosity and that'll cancel that effect out. So that is um, pretty much the final look that I'm happy with. Um, probably make it a little darker. So right here, I'll add um, another tone enhancer and maybe just bring the exposure down a tiny bit. That's pretty too much. Right there, that's even too much. There. Okay, so um, if uh, you decide that you're done for now and then you come back later or you just want to, to um, try to emulate this, this kind of look again, um, you can actually sa uh, save this entire thing as a preset. So you go up here to settings, go uh, save settings as a preset and I'll put it in my favorites and I'll just call this foggy morning. And uh, I'm not going to save the develop settings because that will depend on the photograph. Um, each of them will be developed differently, but the, all the effects I want to be the same. So I'll say okay to that. So if I reset all of this, and this is the way it was originally, and we go up to um, the presets. These, this is my favorites here. If I go up to foggy morning and click on that, um, you'll see that that whole effect is applied again. This is my basic process for these kinds of photographs. Um, some of them are easy. Uh, some of them have 20 or 30 layers and can take hours to process. Um, I really can't explain why one, um, you know, needs a lot more processing time than another. Uh, sometimes it's an emotional response to the actual picture. Um, sometimes it has to do with the complexity of the, the um, composition and the things that are in the photograph. So um, I hope that's helpful. That's it for now. If you have any questions, just let me know. Thanks for watching.